Okay, so recently I created a presentation at work for some coworkers, uh, and it's basically one of our lunch and learn type of sessions. And I created it on uh, the Spring One conference and kind of a wrap up of that conference, what you know, what it was about, what we did, what I learned. And so these screencasts are really about some of the takeaway points I had. So I'm going to split it up and do multiple screencasts and kind of cover a topic in each of these on, on what I learned. So, let's go ahead with the first thing. Um, we're going to look at what we do when we install Java, Groovy, and Grails, or anything in this ecosystem. So, to run anything, really, what we need to do is we need to download and install the J Java JDK first and foremost. That's a requirement for most of these um, or SDKs. So, then we want to install something like Groovy and Grails. <coughs> and to do so, what we do is we extract it to a drive somewhere. There's no actual installer. We just extract this to a drive. And then we set up these environment variables like Java Home, Gra Groovy Home, Grails Home, and verify our installation. Sometimes this can be a little confusing for somebody new to this world. Um, uh, once you get the hang of it, though, it's pretty easy. Um, so let's kind of run through that. So I'm on Windows. Um, I'll, I'll run over to Oracle's website. I'll download the Java JDK. Um, and there actually is an installer for this one, so I'll install that. Then when I'm done, I'll go over to Groovy's website. I'll download Groovy. Um, again, there's no installer. It's kind of just a zip that we extract to a folder. Um, I've extracted it here to my C drive. Uh, same kind of thing with Grails. You notice I have a specific version folder here to keep track of different versions. Um, and then what we do is we go into the worst editor of any editor ever, which is the environment variables editor on Windows. You have these tiny screens that you have to go into and edit. So we have like Grails Home, Groovy Home, and we have to go ahead and make sure that those are in our path. So that's kind of a normal installation process. Then we'll fire up a command prompt. Um, you can do Java dash dash version or Groovy dash dash version, Grails dash it, just so we can kind of verify our installation and see what version we're running. So that's kind of our normal installation process. Um, there's a big problem with this process, though. So what happens when a new release is, a new version is released? So I'm on Groovy 2.1.8. What happens when 2.1.9 comes out? Well, what happens is I have to download this new version. And again, I don't want to just kind of blow out my current version and, and install this over that one. I need to maintain these separate versions in case I need to be able to test against code that was in 2.1.8, because that maybe we still have that at work in production. So I need to be able to manage these multiple versions of the SDKs. So you need to download a new version. You got to go update your environment variables. You have to update your IDEs. Um, and, and again, this could be a pain. And we're just talking about Groovy here. What about this whole Spring ecosystem? If you take advantage of it, things like Groovy, Grails, Gradle, Spring Boot. So there are all these different um, pieces of software that we have to manage multiple versions for. So again, this is an older install, what I used to have on my, sh my, my machine. So I'd have, under Grails, I'd have all these different folder paths. And so really managing these and switching between them became a pain in the butt. So what, that's the problem. What's the solution? The solution is a tool I found out about at Spring One called the GVM, which is, stands for the Groovy Environment, Environment Manager. And if we go ahead and click this, we can pop over to it. Nothing to it, uh, just has some information about it, uh, some great documentation on how to get started. You see right off the bat, though, it's a, it's a tool for managing parallel versions of multiple SDKs on most Unix-based systems. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm actually on a Windows machine here at work. Uh, but don't fear, we can actually get this to run on Windows. So if you don't know what the Groovy Environment Manager is, um, it was highly inspired by tools like RVM and RB Environment Tools that the Ruby community largely uses. Um, and again, if you're on Windows, don't worry. We can go ahead and, and, and use this still, and I'll show you how in a second. So I happen to be using my MacBook at Spring 1. So if you were on Mac or Linux, you can just fire up your bash and run this command, and that will install it. Um, again. Me and a lot of coworkers are on Windows at work, so I needed to make sure that this could work with Windows. So when I got home, I kind of did a little research and found out a really good way to do this. So 
we can get this to work if we install CYG Win. Uh, you can go look on their website and kind of find out what it but what it is. But it basically gives you a shell environment on Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and run my installs. I can run uh, the setup for your system. Once that, uh, actually during the install, we want to make sure we do something. There's a way to kind of select packages that we're going to use within it. Uh, most of every, all the defaults are fine. There is one we need to find though. If we do a search, search for zip, we need to make sure that we get this unzip package. And the reason is when we go to install, it basically downloads a zip file from the internet and then extracts it to our machine. So if we don't have this unzip, you're going to get an error when you go to install a new version of Groovy or Grails or Gradle. And if you do, it's just because you missed this step. So make sure you get the unzip uh, package here. So once we have it, we can just go ahead and launch it from the start. I have CYG1 terminal, so I open up my terminal and I'm ready to go. So how do we use this? So after we're done installing, we either got to run some script. I just shut it down, bring it back up, and run GVM help. So GVM help uh, will basically give us some information here about the tool. So the tool is um, GVM, the command, and the candidate, and then the version. So the different commands that we can run are things like install, uninstall, list, um, uh, version, current. Uh, the different candidates are the, the SDKs, the things that the software that we need to work with. Grails, Griffin, Groovy, Spring Boot. Um, and then versions are optional. Um, we, can in, we can specify a, a certain um, version but if we don't, it's important to note that it's always going to default to the latest stable version. And this is important because uh, there, there are you know, things like Groovy where there's a release candidate available, which is actually newer than the current version, but it's not going to install that by default. It's always going to install the latest stable build. So that's important to remember. If you need a specific version like the release candidate, you need to specify that. So, what do I do? I have GVM install Groovy. So I'm going to install the latest stable version of Groovy. So what it does, it goes out and grabs the newest version, which is 2.1.8 at this time. It downloads it and installs it. it. says, hey, I'm done installing. Do you want to make this your default? And most of the time, yeah, I'm, I'm, up, I'm up upgrading to a new package, or a new software. So yes, I want to make this my default. So we say yes, and now it says setting Groovy to our default. So it's also important to remember that we've done this in terminal, like in a, kind of a, in our shell. So we can run Groovy dash dash version. But if we open our command prompt and run that same uh, same uh, command, it's going to go, "What are you talking about? I don't know what Groovy is." And that's because we didn't set up those wire Windows environment variables to kind of point to where we are. We don't have to do that anymore. Um, you can you can go ahead and, and push those in, but. I, you just don't need to anymore in my opinion. We have everything we need here in our shell. So, but where does this software get installed? So if you look on where you installed CYG Win, in my case I installed it in the C drive. If you go into home and the user uh, and then the .gvm folder, this is what you'll see. So for each candidate they'll have their own folder. So for Groovy it's got its own folder. When I jump into Groovy, I'll see my two versions installed, 2.1.7, 2.1.8. So now, um, not only did it uh, just install it, it actually set up paths for me. So it's got my bin directory in the past. So in my shell, I can just type in Groovy console, and it'll open up that Groovy console for me, because that bin is in that path. So that's nice to have, too. So now, I want to see what versions of Groovy I have installed. So you can, hey, hey, GVM, give me a list of what's available and installed. So if you say GVM list Groovy, it's going to tell you all of the packages that are available. Um, and then it's going to tell you with the asterisk which ones are installed. So you'll see I've got 8 and .7 installed. And then you'll see which one's currently in use, and that's 2.1.8. So that's great. It gives us a list of everything. We know which ones we have installed, and we know which one is our default. Um, but let's say we wanted to switch back to an older version. Um, I can say GVM use Groovy 2.1.7. So now we're using Groovy in this shell 2.1.7. And that's important to note. So when we, when we use the use switch, we're basically saying for this shell, I want to use 2.1.7. 
when we close this down and fire up a new shell, we're basically going to be using the default, which is 2.1.8. Now there is a command for us to be able to do that, and it's default. So if you say GVM default groovy 2.1.7, it will be the default for both this shell and any future shells we open. So that's the Groovy Environment Manager. It's really great for managing parallel versions of multiple SDKs. It's really easy to switch, list, uh, install, remove different versions of the software. And it's great for Mac and Linux, but it also, as you can see today, it works great out of uh, the Windows environment using CYG Win. So please like this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks a lot, guys.